Okay guys, here's a video on uh, Nagios and this time we're going to be configuring and adding a Windows host for monitoring or any other uh, host you, you want to monitor. Let's go on and take a look and remember the the prereq is to install the NS client. So let's go on and install that. And we are right there. Uh, NS oops. nsclient.org go to this URL you need this client to be installed on the client um, laptop or server Windows server or any other server this without this client you will not be able to uh, get monitoring results so this has to be installed so in my case I'm gonna go on and monitor my laptop via uh, Nagios so I'm going to go on and download uh, the latest version, 64-bit. Some people may call it Nagios. I say Nagios. doesn't matter. So let's go on and install it and go for the rest of the configuration. Of course, it gives you all of the information, how to install, how to do this and that, different method, all of those goodies. So let's go and see how we're going to go and do it. Let's go on and do the rest of the configuration. Okay, there we go. Pretty much next, next, next. Um, I'm gonna leave it generic, say typical. Okay. And here we have allowed host, which is this laptop, which is the 127, which is the local IP. I can go on and say 10, 10, that one, that nine, which is my Nagio server or Nagio server. I can allow that or allow any other IP I want. So I could just go on and leave that and let's go and give this Nagio's IP password. So that's my password and uh, in here we have the certificate we have the security etc so in my case let's go and say insecure you don't need the security and um, in this client server enable in this client server yeah let's enable it and uh, should we enable web let's enable it should we enable this? Yes, we need it. Okay. What else? All of these are pretty much enabled. Well, it's going to be a lot of fun. And let's go on and say next. Next, install. And we're going to go on and take a further look. Remember, these are the prereqs. We have to go on and get these prereqs. Otherwise, Configuring it will be useless. So pretty much we do the prereqs. There we go. The um, NS client has been uh, installed. I can just go there and say services.msc. Let's pull it up. I want to make sure the service for NS client is uh, running. There we go. Yes, it is running and it's automatically being uh, started and i want to go on and take a look at login we're going to say allow the service to interact with desktop so we're going to allow this so it could interact with all of the feature whatever on this uh, desktop or lap laptop i'm going to leave the rest a default it's up to you guys if you want to play with these but this is important we have to allow it so let's go on and apply and that is it on in this client pretty much so let's go on and uh, take a look at uh, SNMP so I want to make sure that I have SNMP enabled uh, whereas uh, services SNMP services, which I have it already configured. Of course, you can go to control panel. I have it already configured, which that means I have already have it installed. I've used it for other stuff. So you can go that right there and look at your 
SNMP make sure it is there so this portion if you know it already you can forward just a little bit and that should be it yep so this guy is right there SNMP is there so cancel 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 SNMP is there let's go and take a look a quick look at SNMP SNMP is automatic log on allow to interact with uh, desktop that is good and uh, the agent is just my local computer name and I'm gonna check mark all of these yes I did trap we could put on whatever community name you wanna put on mine is uh, public that's fine okay Just going to go to security and allow from any host. We're going to say send trap information. We're going to say community read only or uh, read and write. I'll say read and write. I'll even give it create. This is me, but again, I'm going to say public. Okay, there we go. Apply and uh, we got SNMP configured and we got NS client configure so we're gonna go on and now take a look at uh, now gonna go and take a look at configuration of the of the Nagus so my Nagus is on uh, Pi 3 so that's the IP for my Nagus I'm gonna SSH to it I'm using Parry so you could download for free of course let's go and log into it I'm SSHed that's my username and this is my password logging in let's go to privilege mode and uh, root mode put on my password there we go we are right now in root so we're gonna go on and do some basic configuration for uh, uh, via PowerShell so I'm gonna go on and edit the the Nagios uh, Nagios configuration file for Windows. So I'm gonna go and say nano. I use nano. Some people may use VI, so I use nano. User local. That's the location where it is. Nagios, etc. Ob object Windows. Uh, dot cfg there we go now we are right here in this configuration screen and in here we see all of the good stuff we can configure so anyways taking a look in here remember if you're not a Linux person this window is pretty much you using the mouse the cursor around using your errors so remember not to just type anywhere in the screen so you have to go to specific area what do you want to add or remove so taking a look in here define a host that means I'm gonna tell it what host I want to add to the monitoring so let's go and uh, take a look at CMD and say oops CMD IP config and take a look at my IP for this host okay the IP for this host is 10.10.10.100 so whereas I have a change right there I'm gonna say 10.10.1.100 okay that's good and uh, let's go on and uh, change the host name because that's not my host name so I can leave it like that, it will come up, but I want to make sure uh, my host name is correct. So, and exit, oops. Okay, cd backslash, just to make it nice and clear, who am I? My uh, host name is SPAI. This is my host name, so I can say host name or who am I? So that is my host name. So I'm going to go on and fill in right here my host name. So let's go on and type in spy. There we go. So in here, we got the IP address. 
You got the host name. In other words, in other words, there we go. We got uh, IP address, we got the host name, and that is right there. And leave this as default for now. Don't touch this because that's part of the templates. Anyways, uh, this would be just to define the host. And then beneath, we're going to define the services and other stuff we want to do on this uh, on this uh, on this Nagus. So we're going to say define services. So in a sense, we're going to say what kind of services would you like to define? Right in here says okay. In here is a generic service. So host name we're going to say spy. Define it here. Okay. Uh, again, for who, which, what kind of service you want to go on and uh, define for this, we're going to say, well, we want to know what's the uptime, how long it has been up, in case it goes down, I want to be notified. So this this, this definition going to be just for uptime. As it, in here, it says uptime. In here, it says just client version. So I'm going to just say what client version it is, all of the goodies. So let's go on and type the host name. We don't need to type IP. In this case, we're just defining what kind of services we wanna we wanna monitor. As you see it, it says memory usage, CPU load, all of these stuff. So I'm not gonna go on and type all of these. It's unnecessary because this is just test only. Just gonna do this one only. So I'm, I wanna see the CPU load. And I want to see the uptime. Actually, let's go on and add uh, the rest of them. I'm going to monitor the memory usage. So we're going to put in the host name. Remember, the host name is the name of my computer. We're going to check um, this uh, C drive usage. And uh, what else? And w services okay spy there we go we're just filling in this is just for test only later on we will go on and configure some kind of a group that will enable just uh, just for group group of computer we can just put a list uh, in a group and say do it for all of these so taking a look nothing down there and double checking everything looking good let's go on and um, Proceed with uh, saving it. Just a second. Okay, after adding and modifying these for host name and putting the IP address of the the target uh, computer that we want to monitor, we are pretty much done. So. And let's go on and save it. Control O, press Enter. Control X. Let's go on and say uh, service. Nagios. Restart. There we go. Successful. If we had seen an error right here, that would have meant uh, we did something wrong. So, anyways, let's go on and now test our Nagios. Is it really working? Is it reading my laptop for all of those uh, things we configured for or not? 10.10.1.9 slash Nagios. Okay, there we go. Nagios admin. That is my password. 647. There we go. As you see it, it's a pretty new version. And let's go and take a look at hosts. There we go. Spy is up and it is up and the local host is of course itself. It is up and uh, things are looking good. There we go. Notification enable and uh, all of these checks are looking good and that is pretty much it. I'm glad it's not flapping. Flapping is when there's error. You could specify what services you don't want to check. You can say disable, you can say enable all of services or disable specific one or etc. Believe it or not, this configuration is finished. 
Thank you for watching, and uh, I hope you find it informative. And uh, have a good day. Please comment and let me know if you have any questions.